Hey everybody. So welcome to our next video where we take those mole ratios that we've already learned in stoichiometry and we use that in order to introduce mass. It's really not useful for chemists to just convert the moles of something to the moles of something else. It's actually more useful, of course, to convert it to the number of grams. So if we need to determine what mass of a final product is produced from so many grams of a reactant, we can do that not only by using the mole ratio, but also using their regular mole conversions that we did back in Chem 1. So we're actually only introducing something that you've already done. This is nothing new, but we're using that mole ratio step from before to convert from the mass of one reactant or product to the mass of another reactant or product. Again, with stoichiometry, I don't like to talk too much because it's easier to do the problems than it is to talk about how to do them. So let's dive in and start doing the sample problems in the notes. So we are going to do a different type of conversion here. We're still going to use that mole ratio. The mole ratio is crucial in any stoichiometry problem, no matter what type you're using, you'll always have to use that mole ratio. But what we're introducing here is the mass of, in this case, it's a product. The steps to solve these are exactly the same. The only difference is you have to use that molar mass to convert from the moles of one of your products in this case to the mass. And that's just using the molar mass, which you can do. That's a chem one thing. You did that on your review uh, test in order to um, begin chem two. So I know you know how to do this. Let's stop talking about it and just dive in. So sample problem four, in photosynthesis, plants use energy from the sun to produce glucose and oxygen from the reaction of carbon dioxide and water. What mass in grams of glucose is produced when three moles of water reacts with carbon dioxide? So we do have to write a balanced chemical equation for this. So notice the steps to solve. It does say write and or balance the equation. In this case, you have to do that. So let's go ahead and get an equation down here. Uh, plants use energy from the sun to produce glucose. So I'm gonna start off with my arrow there. And glucose is a product. And oxygen. So I have my two products from the reaction of carbon dioxide and water. So on my reactant side, I'm going to include CO2 and H2O. Uh, don't forget diatomic, so oxygen is a diatomic. Balancing this one. I always think that these types of combustion reactions, this is an almost an inverse combustion reaction, a little tricky to balance, but um, I know you can do it. I like to balance carbons first. I'm going to balance my hydrogens next. Looks like I need a six here. And we're going to save oxygen for last because I have oxygen in every product. So you should include a six right there. In this case, it says what mass in grams of glucose is produced when three moles of water reacts with carbon dioxide. So we still need to use that mole ratio here because that's what relates everything to everything else. So in order to solve this problem, convert moles of your known, in this case, the known is water. I'm starting off with three moles of that, to moles of the unknown using that mole ratio. So let's go ahead and start off right there. I have three moles of water. Set up my crosshair. I'll put a one down below. I recommend that you write the formulas here for this. And the reason why I recommend it is because when we start getting into longer stoichiometry problems, you're going to see that it gets kind of confusing. It can get confusing quickly only because you're working with so many units of moles and so many units of grams. So you're gonna see me write um, moles of H2O. So I'm writing the actual formula, 
formula there. Moles to glucose. I'm going to just set up another one there because I'm going to need it. So moles of water cancels. And if I look at the balanced equation, it looks like six moles of water will produce one mole of glucose. So this right here is that first mole ratio step. So this is the mole ratio, which again, we need because we need to convert the moles of one reactant into the moles of the product. So that's the relationship between them and you need that from the balanced chemical equation. Once you are in the correct units, so in this case I'm in moles of glucose, we want glucose, we want the mass of glucose. And if, I, if I'm in my current units of moles of glucose, C6H12O6, Life is easy because you can do this. Grams of glucose goes right on top. This is a simple mole conversion. And I'm not going to walk you through the molar mass step of this all of the time, but if you were to calculate the molar mass for glucose, one mole has a mass of 180.16. This is a zero right here, 180.16. Uh, there we go, a little bit sloppy there. These units of moles of glucose cancel. And then you would solve this just like you would any other mole conversion problem. And your answer should be 90.1 grams of C6, H12, O6. Make sure your answer is expressed to the correct number of significant figures. So this 3.00 has three, so your answer should also have three. So the only quote unquote new step that we're introducing is that conversion of moles to grams, which you've already done. That's a Chem 1 skill. So nothing new here. Let's go ahead and try sample problem five. So we actually need to use this same equation. So I'm gonna leave that up on the screen. So we wanna know what mass of carbon dioxide is needed to react with the three moles of water. So we're starting off with, I have three moles of water. Let's get this in a different color here. Um, for this sample problem, we wanna know how many grams of CO2 is needed to produce to react with all of that water. So I'll do this one in pink here, just so we know that this is where we're going. Um, so you could see all of this on one screen. We're always going to start off with what we're given: three point zero zero moles of H two O. Sit up across here. There, one goes down below as a placeholder. First things first, I'm in moles of water, got to get it to moles of that CO2. So let's go ahead and do that using the mole ratio. Moles of water to moles of carbon dioxide. And from that balanced chemical equation, it looks like it's uh, essentially a one-to-one, -one, but uh, six to six, which is a one-to-one. -one. I'm still going to write six and six down here. Now that I'm in moles of CO2, let's go ahead and convert that to grams. Moles of CO2 to grams of CO2. And one mole of carbon dioxide has a mass of 44.01 grams. Again, that's just calculating the molar mass by adding up all of the elements on the periodic table. So, Solve it just like you would. So essentially it's three times 44.01. And your answer should be 132 grams of CO2. Now you don't have to include this right here. You don't have to include the formula or the, the element symbol. I usually like to just because I feel like personally it looks more complete that way. I feel like I solved something. 
Now, let's say um, you solved this and you use the answer from here in order to solve this. So you can even solve this problem by starting off with 90.1 grams of glucose, converting mass to moles using 180.6, using the mole ratio of glucose to carbon dioxide, and then using that molar mass of carbon dioxide. That's what makes stoichiometry so interesting and so nice. It's, I was going to say exciting, but it's really not exciting. Uh, maybe to me, but it all works out. The math, it's going to work out regardless. Um, and that's why this is so crucial uh, to chemists is understanding this relationship between um, the moles in every species in a chemical reaction, and you could solve everything from that. Now, we're going to take this um, and just rather than starting off in moles and converting to grams like we did here, we're just going to do it backwards. So you can also uh, start off with units of mass, so conversions of mass to the number of moles. Also, with three three steps in order to solve this. And notice that first step is always uh, write and rebalance the equation. It looks like in sample problem six, you have an equation, but unfortunately it's not balanced. So we do wanna balance that guy first. Um, and let's just look and see kind of where we're at here. Again, I like to just do these problems rather than talk about them. The first step in the industrial manufacture of nitric acid is the catalytic oxidation of ammonia, which is given for you down there. The reaction is run using 824 grams of ammonia and an excess of nitrogen, of oxygen, I'm sorry. So remember that excess part just means that there's more than enough of that oxygen there to react. So that really doesn't mean anything to us. In order to solve this though, we do have to balance this equation. And this one's kind of a doozy, so let's do this one together. Um, looks like nitrogens are balanced, so I'm gonna skip that one first. Uh, oxygen, I have that in three reactants and products, so I'm gonna skip that one. I'm gonna actually balance hydrogens first. Three and two looks like I wanna get to six, so I'm gonna change that to a two, and I'm gonna make that guy a six there by adding a three which means I need to have two nitrogens here as well. So nitrogens and hydrogens are now balanced at this point. Let's go ahead and check for oxygen now. So I don't have any here, which is good. I just have to balance this diatomic oxygen there. Two oxygens plus three gives me five. Well, five divided by two gives me two and a half. And I, I told you this when we were balancing equations in the last unit, but when you get a half of something, write down the half and you technically can't have a half of a molecule. So just times everything by two. So this guy should be a four. That should be a five. That should be a four. And that should be a six. Makes life easier, I think, to just kind of to do that step rather than to rebalance the whole entire thing. The reaction is run using 824 grams of ammonia. And we want to know how many moles of NO are formed. So we're starting off with the mass of ammonia. So that's what we're going to have to start off converting here. So I'm going to write 824 grams of NH3. Got to get it to the number of moles first. That mole ratio is crucial. But because we're not in moles of ammonia, let's get it into moles of ammonia. And we're going to do that converting massive known to moles using that molar mass. So the mass of ammonia, grams per mole. I happen to have these memorized because that's what happens when you teach chemistry for 12 years. 17.04 <laughs> um, grams of ammonia is equivalent to one mole. Again, you just add them all up and then, oh, not an equal sign and go from there. Then 
we're in moles of ammonia. That's not the unit we want though. We want moles of nitrogen monoxide right here. So let's convert moles of ammonia to moles of NO using that mole ratio. And it looks like it's a one to one, but again, I like to put four to four. You could put one to one if you want, because ultimately you'll get the same answer anyway. And when you solve for this, you should get 48.4 moles of NO. That's a heck of a lot of moles. Wow. <laughs> we are starting off with a massive amount of uh, ammonia, though. So, again, no, no new steps. I didn't teach you anything new in this video. It's something you've already known how to do. It's just using this mole ratio. Let's do the same thing, except now we want to know how many moles of water are formed from that. So, let's do this in a different color yet again. And now we want to know how many moles of water can I form? This is what makes it kind of interesting is because, like I said, no matter where you start, what number you start off with, you'll get the same exact answer any way you do this. So I'm going to make my life and your life easy. Rather than starting off with that 824 grams, I know that I could produce 48.4 moles of nitrogen monoxide from that 824 grams of ammonia. I'm just gonna start off with this number right here because that actually makes less work for me. All I have to do is a mole ratio step. 48.4 moles of NO. Let's just do a mole ratio. Moles of NO two moles of water. What the heck is that? <laughs> and let's look at, look this up here. So four moles of NO is produced alongside six moles of water. Four moles alongside six moles of water. Again, you will get the same exact answer if you also started off with that 824 grams of ammonia. That's what makes stoichiometry that's I'm getting so excited I can't even say it. That's what makes stoichiometry so interesting to me is that it'll always work itself out. And your answer should be 72.6 moles of water. If you want, try to do it starting off with that 824 grams of ammonia. You should get the same exact answer, which is pretty darn cool. You try this one here. So try sample problem seven. Um, I want you to pause this video and you try to do this one on your own. And once you are done solving it, or once you think you're done solving it, I'm gonna put the solution up here for you to check your work, but I'm not going to work you through this step by step. I wanna try to make these videos as short as I can for you. I will give you a hint. You do have to write a balanced chemical equation first. So go ahead and pause this video and see if you can solve sample problem seven, both questions A and B. And there's your answer for sample problem seven. So um, answer for A is 7.81 moles of mercury to oxide. Just make sure your oxygen is diatomic. Sometimes people forget to make that oxygen diatomic which in turn would affect the molar mass here. So just double check. And once I have that answer, again, you could start off with the 125 grams of oxygen. It doesn't matter, but why do more steps for yourself when you don't have to? So I just started off with this answer from A, 7.81 moles of mercury to oxide. Use that mole ratio. It's a one-to-one -one mole ratio step. Answers the same exact thing. Don't reinvent the wheel. Don't try to make these problems harder than they need to be. Sit back, think about it for a second, and look at the information that's presented to you. Can you make this problem a little bit shorter than it needs to be? Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't, but a lot of times you can in fact do that. So make sure you're always checking to see uh, what the problem is asking for.
Now that we can do that, we are going to go ahead and do a problem known as a mass mass problem. So you're going to see me or hear me refer to this as mass mass. So we're going from the mass of one reactant or product to the mass of another reactant or product. Um, and it's the same exact process. The only thing is we unfortunately need to find two molar masses. Uh, and that's the name of the game. Sometimes you, you're going to have to do that. Um, let's just dive right in. Sample problem eight. Here we go. Tin 2 fluoride is used in some toothpastes. It's made by the reaction of tin with hydrogen fluoride according to the following equation. And luckily for us, it's balanced. So that's good to go. How many grams of tin 2 fluoride? So how many grams of tin 2 fluoride? are produced from the reaction of 30 grams, 30 grams of hydrofluoric acid with tin. So we're starting off with grams of one reactant and we want to know the mass of one of the products. So we still have to use that mole ratio step. That mole ratio is what relates everything to everything else. So let's start off with that 30 grams of hydrofluoric acid. Get this to moles. Uh, when in doubt, mole it out. So if you don't know how to do something, I always tell my students, um, just convert it to the number of moles. You're probably halfway to the right answer anyway, if you convert it to moles. Grams of HF to moles. Fluorine's 19, uh, hydrogen's 1.01, .01, so that's 20.01. Cancels out. Let's go ahead and get this to moles of H, or not moles of HF, to moles of the tin 2 fluoride. So moles of HF to moles of tin 2 fluoride, SNF2. And it looks like two moles of hydrofluoric acid, two moles, will produce one mole of tin 2 fluoride. I'm going to throw a one up there. Cancels out. Notice I'm very cognizant of my units. Uh, a lot of times students hate units, and I'm not sure why. I know they can be a pain in the neck, but they're going to help you, and they're going to help you stay organized. Uh, they're going to help you get the right answer because you are keeping yourself organized. So you don't have to do it all the time, but I do highly recommend you follow your units through. So it looks like, after a quick calculation, molar mass is 156.71. And let's solve. So 30 divided by 20.01 divided by 2 times that 156.71 gives me a final answer of 117.5 grams of tin 2 fluoride. And that's it. This is as complicated as it's going to get for us right here. And it's just a mass, mass problem. You can do this right here. This is a simple mole conversion right here. Grams to moles, nothing new. Here's another moles to grams. You can do that. This right here is the only new step. That's that mole ratio, but that's coming from that last video. So nothing is entirely new from this video. This mole ratio step is crucial. It relates everything to everything else in a chemical reaction. I cannot say that enough. All right, let's get through sample problems nine and 10 so we can finish off this video, the bulk of stoichiometry. Laughing gas, which is N2O, is sometimes used as an anesthetic in dentistry. It's produced when ammonium nitrate is decomposed according to the following equation. It's balanced, thankfully. How many moles of ammonium nitrate? So let's go ahead and get the drawing tool up here again. How many grams of ammonium nitrate are required to produce 33 grams of laughing gas? 
real life problems. So let's say you're working for some pharmaceutical company and you are making laughing gas and you need to make so many grams of laughing gas in order to put in a canister. Well, how many grams of the reactant to make the laughing gas do you need to do that? Real life stuff here. So uh, let's start off with what we know, 33 grams of N2O, 33 grams, let's see. So 33 grams of N2O. Got to get it to the number of moles of laughing gas. So molar mass is 44.01 grams of N2O is equal to one mole. Grams cancels out. Let's use that mole ratio step right here. Moles of N2O to moles of ammonium nitrate. Moles of N2O to moles of ammonium nitrate. It looks like it's a one-to-one -one mole ratio. Once we've used that mole ratio and now I'm in units of moles of ammonium nitrate. Let's go ahead and convert moles of ammonium nitrate to the mass of ammonium nitrate. And if you calculate that, you should get 80.04. So one mole of ammonium nitrate is a mass of 80.04 grams. Perfect. So, Solve this like you would, multiply what's on top, divided by what's on the bottom, 33 divided by 44.01. I'm gonna times that by that 80.04. Final answer is 60, 60.0. Grams of ammonium nitrate. Perfect. How many grams of water are produced in this reaction? So this, this is an interesting question because if you think back to Chem 1, using a different concept, you can do this. I'm gonna show you that after though. So I have 60 grams of ammonium nitrate, oh boy. So I have 60 grams of ammonium nitrate and I have 33 grams of laughing gas. I want to know how many grams of water is produced. It doesn't matter what you start off with because if you start off with 33 grams of laughing gas or if you start off with 60 grams of ammonium nitrate, you'll get the same mass of water. So I'm going to use, I don't know, I'll use this 33 grams again because I feel like it. So I'm just going to plug this through here. So let's get that guy set up. I already calculated the molar mass, which is nice. 44.01 grams, equivalent to one mole. So my handwriting's getting kind of sloppy. Uh, one mole of N2O is produced alongside two moles of water. And the molar mass of water, one mole of water, is equal to 18.02 grams of water. Let's go ahead and uh, cancel out some units here just to stay consistent. And when you solve for that, you should get 27. 27.0 grams of water. But if you think back to the law of conservation of mass from Chem 1, I'm going to do this in a different color up here. Law of conservation of mass says that the mass that goes in is equal to the mass that comes out. We calculated that 33 grams of laughing gas is produced from 60 grams of ammonium nitrate. Law of conservation of mass says that the mass of your reactants must equal the mass of the products. Guess what? 33 plus 27 gives me 
that's 60. For part B, you wouldn't even have to do that mass mass problem because if you remember the law of conservation of mass, you could solve that using a simple subtraction. It does not matter how you solve it. If you use your brain to solve these problems, I am more than happy with how you solve the problem. If you get the right answer and if you can logically get the correct answer using concepts that you have been taught, by all means, do it. That's the beauty of chemistry is that there are so many ways to solve problems. As long as there are no flaws in your logic, do it. I'm happy. That means you're thinking about solving these problems. One more and I'm going to end the video. Sample problem 10. Try it up. Try sample problem 10. First things first. Guess what? Write an equation for that one. You also have units of kilograms. So I'm giving you a little, little curveball there, but you can do it. Kilograms to grams. I know you can do it. Pause this video. Solve this problem. So here's your answer here. So balanced chemical equation. Just remember that there are 1,000 grams in a kilogram. So there is 1,000 grams is equal to one kilogram. So I just did that in my head. I'm usually a stickler about showing how to do conversions. You do not have to show me those on paper. I know if you're in Chem 2, you can divide by 1,000 and move the decimal place over. So I just moved that decimal place over three times and I got rid of that. Here's my work. It doesn't express to me what units the answer should be in. So either one of these answers is fine. 363 grams of silver, which is equal to 0.363 kilograms of silver. Um, like I said, this is the bulk of stoichiometry right here. It doesn't get much harder than a mass mass problem, except when we do limiting reagent problems, which is when we have like three mass mass problems in one. So you're going to get very comfortable with these, like I said, because they have to do with everything chemistry. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Make notes of anything. Highlight something you're confused about. Come and see me in class, before class, during lunch, the next day, this day, whatever. Ask me questions that you have. Mrs. Snyder, where did you get this number from in the video? Please, by all means, do that. Um, otherwise, I will see you in the next video all about limiting reagents. Bye.